Oh, we're starting. Excellent. Okay, so um, this screen is what you want to take a picture of if you're going to take any pictures. And it's covering pretty much everything that we're going to do. So if you know all of this, you can leave the room now because it's pretty crowded. Um, we have four questions that we want to answer. That's the one at the top, the methodology. And it's a methodology, it's a generic methodology for any memory leak. I'm going to be looking at heap memory leaks, but that methodology stands uh, for any memory leak. If you answer those questions, you've solved your leak. Um, the tools I'm going to be looking at, there, it's, this, it's that list of them. I'm going to use GC Viewer to look at the GC logs. I'm going to do some heap dumping, some histogram, um, and I'm going to use Eclipse Mat. Um, and then I'll use Visual VM as my profiler, and I'll explain what I'm doing with each of those. Uh, and over there in the right-hand corner is who I am. So, familiar with it? You're welcome to leave the room. There's lots of other inter inter interesting ones. Not familiar with it? Then hopefully this is worthwhile. These pictures are from the Hotels.com in Instagram account. They're all competition winners of a uh, Hotels.com. This is Vietnam. If you want to go there, beautiful. Okay, so the four questions that we're going to answer: Do I have a leak? What is leaking? What's keeping them alive? Where is it leaking from? So let's start with. Uh, let's, that's a. Uh, logging before and after Java 9. Um, you should have GC logging turned on for your application. There is almost no overhead. Nobody does not recommend it, to put it accurately. Everybody recommends that you have it on. Um, so make sure that you do have GC logging on. OK, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to show you a particular GC logs viewer. Um, let me go over here and I'll kick it off. I've got a GC, so I'm using GC Viewer, which there's lots of them. Most of them are free, well not lots of them, there's quite a few of them. Uh, most of them are free. There's one called Sensum, which isn't free, but gives you some very good information. So it can be worth paying for it if you don't know what you're doing. So this is GC Viewer. I will, let me just load something and then I'll magnify it so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, so this is a, a GC log. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's okay. Um, let me make that a bit bigger. So what what I have here is this tool. I'll make it even bigger. Can I make it bigger? Yes, I can. Um, so I've loaded in loaded in a log. You can you can any GC log that your JVM produces. You can load it into here, uh, and you can actually load it in while it's live, while it's uh, generating data. There's a button up here, which is the refresh button, uh, and there's one that which will automatically refresh it um, every few seconds. So you can see it happening live. So what I've loaded in is a GC log. Now, GCs, garbage collections, I'm talking about. If you don't know what GCs are, they're garbage collections. Um, they're, uh, they have two interesting parameters. One is how long they take. And the other is how much of the heap is being used up. So it's not the garbage collection, but how much of the heap is being used up, how much memory is being used. So that's why down the left here is uh, an axis with two different numbers. The one on the right here is seconds, or yeah, it is seconds there, 0 0.011 seconds in this case. And the one on the left is megabytes, 110 megabytes. So that, those, there's, a, there's a dual scale on the left, um, and there's a... Uh, a view option up here where you can turn on and off colors for various things that you want to measure. So here I've turned on a few of them. I've turned on these green lines. They're a garbage collection. And the height of that corresponds to the time it took. Um, the red and the blue, on the other hand, are how much heap has been used in your memory. Um, the red is the overall memory that's available to your application. The blue is how much has been used. And because this is garbage collections, let me just magnify it a bit so you understand what you're looking at. These are garbage collections, so it's going up and down because the young generation gets full, and then there's a garbage collection, and it empties out as much as it can, and then that's this up sawtooth pattern. OK, so this is called GC Viewer. It's my preferred viewer of garbage collections, but as I said, there are others. If you go to fasterj.com, there is a menu option with a list of all the garbage collectors that are available. So I am going to open 
the reason why you want to look at garbage collectors. And let me just magnify out. So this is what a garbage collection log looks like when you have a memory leak. Okay, and it's this is this is the most obvious kind. There are other kinds. You, sometimes you get spikes where it blows out and doesn't have a memory error, and sometimes you get uh, caches being emptied after a while, and so it goes back down and goes up. But ultimately. The point of having an out of memory error is that your heap got too full and it can't produce any more memories, so it runs out of memory. And you will see that first happening in your GC log, um, as if you're monitoring it. So it's, it's, it's an excellent way. And s certainly, if there's any kind of leak, a gradual leak, you can see it in the GC log way before you get your out of memory error. So this is a great way of doing it. Now, what you're looking for, very specific things, when you've got a, a memory leak, your heap is getting gradually fuller. It will try and free up memory. That's the job of the garbage collector. And each time it frees up memory, it will drop how much is available. And you'll get a, with a memory leak, you're, gu you're guaranteed to get full GCs. That's the, that's the, there's, there's garbage collection in the young generation. There's garbage collection in the old generation. You're guaranteed that the old generation is going to get full up, and it will have to do a full GC. So what you're looking for specifically is the amount of heap used after the full GCs. So on this one, I've got full GCs turned on as the big black lines. Here, let me just focus in on that so you can see what I'm talking about. Up here on the top in the, in the thing, full GC lines are black, big black lines there. Um, <coughs> it's not my choice of colours, that's the colours that are there. So each time I get one of these vertical black lines, it was a full GC. And what I'm looking at is the heap after the full GC. So this, the bottom of the blue after one of these black lines. So it's there, there's one, there's another, there's another. And the point is that after, for each one of these, it's going up. Now, if there's no memory leak, it'll be flat. It, it could be any level. It depends on how many live objects you have for your standard application. But it'll be roughly flat. It might go up and down and jiggle a bit, but it'll be flat. But with a memory leak, it's guaranteed to go up because your memory is getting more and more full of these objects that are leaking, that you can't get rid of. And that's why... This is very, very simple to see. And then you get to this state where lots and lots of full GCs happen all together and your application slows to a crawl because actually it's not really doing your application, it's just doing garbage collection and you've built a, an application that does garbage collection a lot, um, which is not the ideal situation. And this is the point where everything's slowed down and every sun starts screaming and they've actually noticed there's a problem. But you could have noticed this problem way, way before. So this is fairly standard and very straightforward. Turn on GC logging, use a GC viewer to view it, or use any GC viewer to view it. And there we are. That was tool number one. Um, let me. So that's really simple, really straightforward. Just look at the heap after each old generation or full GC or major GC, whichever one you want to call it. The next tool I'm going to look at are histograms. So we answer the question, the first question, do I have a leak? And in that case, the GC viewer showed you very straightforward. Second question is, what is it that's leaking? Um, so let me see. I have uh, an application that clearly it will leak. Let me just kick it off. This is uh, an Eclipse IDE. I know most of you use IntelliJ. Um, I use Eclipse because, well, I'll tell you later. Uh, um, so, what am I looking at? I am looking at that. that so, let's go and do JPS, which is in your bin directory. And it's the same as PS, but it finds the Java programs. So, there's the FastLeak application that I kicked off. That's the process ID. And in your Again, in your bin directory, you have this tool called JMAP. Can you see it at the bottom? Sorry, let me, let me just control C and bump it up a bit. Um, there. 
Okay, so there is a JMAP in your bin directory. That's a very useful tool. And I am going to get a histogram from it, and I'll show you what the histogram looks like. Um, so I need to just tell it I want it histo live. I want the, that's the live means I want it to actually do a little GC before it gives me the, the numbers because we've got a memory leak, so I don't want any dead objects that haven't been collected. I want the dead objects that have, have been, that have, the dead objects that are leaking rather than the random dead objects that are dead but haven't reached, haven't been collected because of a garbage collection. Uh, and not happening yet. So that's JMAP. Let me just dump it into a file. I'll call it t1.txt. So that's the thing I executed. Um, now, let's have a look at that file. And it's pretty straightforward. OK, so you get uh, the first column, which is just for a numbering each of the, the rows for, for no particular reason. And then there's the number of instances, the number of bytes used by all of those instances, and then the class name. And the class name is fairly straightforward if it's just instances of, of a class, instances of field. Um, it's a little bit more complicated if it's a, an array. So these are instances of hashmap dollar node, which are the elements inside a hashmap. And this is an array of hashmap dollar nodes. So there are 14 arrays of hash, hashmap dollar nodes, presumably 14 hashmaps um, there. You can see the 14 there. So that's an array. That's standard. It puts a square bracket L and a semicolon at the end. Uh, and then you've got also the, uh, the primitives. That's a char. That's a byte. That's an int. And these saying it's an array of char. That's a char array. An int array, byte array. So it's, it's fairly straightforward, quite easy to see. Um, and immediately I can see if I knew my application intimately and I wasn't expecting 108,208 something else's, then I would say, whoa, that looks like a leak to me. So with almost no effort, using a histogram, I can pretty much find uh, a leak. But um, Let's say it's a little bit more complicated, and uh, I'm not sure what object is. I've waited a little while. I'll take a second histogram, and then I'll go into bash, because I wrote a Perl script, but I, don't, I only have Perl in Unix. Um, Perl tt.ps. So all, all this is doing is merging those two files. Into tt.csv. So it's just a little policy. I won't even bother telling you because it's just it's taking exactly. You know, it's using uh, the class name as a key, and it's just um, put, uh, putting this in column one, column two, and then the, for the next file uh, in column three and column four. Um, so it's really straightforward. You'll see when I open it, there's nothing uh, complex about it. Oh, let me exit. And I'll make it bigger so you can see. So just as I said, the class is the key. And then it's the, uh, the number of instances, the number of bytes for the first sample and then the second sample. Uh, let me just uh, do a sort because we want to sort on, I guess, the number of instances is a good idea. So let's sort on the number of instances. Where's the sort gone? Uh. Oh, there. OK, so it's E. Actually, well, before I do that, I'm going to actually do a column where I diff the number of instances because that's going to be ev even easier. So let me do that minus that. So here we have a column which is just the differences of the number of instances. And I'll sling that down to the bottom. Keep going. There we go. OK. Go back and let's sort on the F column. 
I want a header. Where is it? My height does not have headers. Um, and column F. And I want the largest at the top, so it's the other way around. OK, and let's have a look what we've got. So, hey presto, we have actually four objects that have increased. Which, so if you think about it, your standard application is not leaking. It's going to have a set of objects. And you do a garbage collection, it's only the live objects. And that set should be remain approximately the same because you'll create some objects, but they'll get garbage collected. Anything that isn't leaking stays roughly the same. Anything that's leaking is going to increase in the number of instances that, that are there. And the longer you, you have a gap between these two histograms, the longer the, the, the time is. So this is really straightforward and very simple. That's going to... Ah. Sometimes... Excel is too clever for its own good. So, so I, what I'm seeing is that I've got something else's, some char arrays, some strings, and some hash up nodes. So I have answered that question. Hang on. I've answered that question. What is leaking? Which classes? I've actually got four classes that I know are leaking. And they're obviously linked in some way. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's gonna, not going to be surprising that obviously there's something else that's leaking, but um, what can you expect from a quick example like this? So that was that. Um, now, the question, the next question I'm asking is, so we answered, do I have a leak? Yes. What is leaking? I found the classes very straightforward through the histograms. What is keeping them alive? Okay, So I have a leak, but something must be keeping them alive. It's not just I create those objects and they stay alive. Something is keeping them alive. And what is it that's keeping them alive? Nothing so far has told me that. What I need for this is a heap dump. So I have done a heap dump. Um, I use JMAP again. It, it lets you does, do a heap dump, but there's other mechanisms to do heap dumps. Um, if you ping me, if, if you look me up online, then I'll send you all the slides, so, uh, or you can look at the recording. All of these are available. Um, so I use Eclipse Mat. So Eclipse Mat is, a, is available as a standalone application, but I, I, always, I used to use Eclipse, so I just keep, carry on using Eclipse because it's quite convenient, because you can use it as a plug-in to your Eclipse if you use it as an IDE, which is why I've tended to stay with Eclipse. Uh, anyway, but you can use it completely as a standalone application. You don't have to use the IDE, so it's not a problem. Um, I will switch over to that, and I will just switch to the Eclipse map view. And I'm going to load in a heap dump that I took earlier, because it takes a little bit of time, so I didn't want to um, wait around for it. Um, so I, and this is a pretty quick talk. So there's my leak, and it's doing stuff. Now this is the third tool we're using. We use GC Viewer, we use GC JMAP for the histogram and for dumping a leak, and now we're using the Eclipse Mat to analyze um, the heap. Um, so you get this, when you load in uh, the heap, you get this dialogue. It says, do you want to know the, a leak suspect's report? It's very nice. It actually says, hang on, I might be able to work out what the suspects are. So let me do that, and then I'll give you a report. Um, and there it is. It takes a little while to come. And you can see that. OK, so it's saying, ah, there's a problem suspect. If I go back to the overview, which is just in this other tab here, then it's actually showing that me that most of the objects, it partitions your application into roots from the roots. And actually, most of them are coming from one root. But it's even cleverer, and it's telling you exactly what it thinks. So 80% of the time, if you have a heap, uh, if you have a, um, a heap leak, a leak in the heap, this will tell you the right thing. There are quite a lot of edge classes of leaks, like, for example, um, if you've got a, 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 an ID and it's being duplicated at, at some low level, so you get duplicate IDs of everything, then you won't necessarily see that because all of the IDs are correct and they're all being held by something that's way down in the stack and the correct ones are held with the, uh, with the duplicated ones. So you'll still see a leak, but you won't necessarily see 
a route that says these are all the leaks. Uh, because a lot of the time you go in there and if you start looking at the, the actual IDs, they all look correct, so you don't really understand what it is. So there's these edge cases where it can't identify, and it, they're really hard to identify anyway. Um, you can still use the tool, but they're hard to identify. But from, I'd say 80% of leaks, this tells you straight away what the problem is. So it's telling me, it's problem suspect number one, it's saying, oh, I've got a class called fast leak, and um, it's being held on by the, the application class loader. It's got to be held on by something in the JVM, right? Um, and it's saying, oh, okay, let me have a look at the details here. So it's saying that I have my class here, I launch a helper, it's holding on to the class itself, fast leak, let me magnify this so you can see it. So it's saying, this is my JVM class, JVM that's holding on to it. This is my fast leak class, and it has an instance variable called a cache, and that a cache has a table, and that's got a load of nodes, and it's telling me over here on the right-hand side just how much is retained, how much of the heap is used. So that's like, that's most of the heap. as 100, and I think the heap itself, if I switch back to the other one, it was, it was around 200 megs. So the vast majority of the, meat, of the leak is held off this. So straight away, I've answered my question. There are, if, if it doesn't give you that like really quickly, I recommend looking at videos on how to use Eclipse Map. There's a lot of other capabilities. There's uh, histograms like we got in the last one. Um, there's a dominator tree. There's all sorts of things, and you can, you can go into there and start drilling down as far as you can. But this was really straightforward, and for the most part, you can use Eclipse Mat um, or any memory analyzer to find what is holding on. So that answered that third question. What is it that's keeping my objects alive? So I've established, got a leak, I've uh, got something else and a few other things leaking, and it's uh, my, this class which is holding on to the leak. And then the last question is, assuming it's not a simple little example like this, where in my huge application of 100,000 lines of code, because I could find, I could start investigating all the code, but where is it, is there a quick way of doing it? And yes, there is a quick way of finding where the leak is. Oh, did I start my application? Yeah, I did. Um, so let me just kick off. Now, any profiler that has a generational, um, a, a, a tab that shows generations will work for, for this aspect here. Um, so let me go. I'm going to attach fast leak. And this is the fourth tool I'm looking at. Uh, I'm using a profiler, which has a generations. It shows you the generations. Um, uh, of, of the objects that are being monitored. Uh, so most, uh, most standard profilers will do this, and I'm using Visual VM. Um, so I want to, with Visual VM, I just need to go over to the memory settings, and I want to record allocation stack traces. Um, and let me kick that off. So if you look at the, the, the tabs here, I'll focus in so you can see. Um, I've got the objects. It's tracking them uh, live. It tells you it's got this uh, graphical view of how many bytes they're using, so you can see wh what's taking up. It's got a number. It's got the live, live objects, the count. So, uh, so very much that the same numbers from that histogram that we looked at earlier. But then it's also got this column here, which is called generations. So this is not the age of the objects. This is how many different aged objects there are. It's a little subtle. Don't worry about it. You don't actually need to know why. You just need to know that there has to be a generations column that you can sort on. That's all that's needed from um, the profiler because that will tell you exactly where it's uh, sorted from. So remember, we've got a memory leak. This is tracking all objects. If I just sorted now, I'll get all sorts of different objects in here. Um, but a memory leak only... This is, this is tracking objects that are dead but haven't been garbage collected yet, so I just need to get rid of those ones. Um, so I'll go over to, I think it's the monitor here, and I'll execute a GC to get rid of any dead ones that can be collected because I want the live one, the ones that, I, that are live, that I don't want to be live but are live. That's what a leak is. 
And then I'll head back to the profiler and I'll look at the generations, sort on them. And there's three there at the top. Um, now, if you remember from the, uh, I'll go back to it, sorry. It's difficult to do this in, if you remember from the spreadsheet, we actually had four leaks. Uh, there's something else in these JVM classes. The uh, visual VM is only showing three of them. That's because I've only tracked every 10th allocation, not every allocation. And also this is for free tool, right? So you get what you pay for. Um, but it's, you know, it's not too bad. So I'll, I'll, I'll just say, okay, well, this str these strings are leaking. Let me have a look at them. So I'll take a snapshot and I'll show the allocation traces. Because remember, we want to find where in the code we're leaking. That's the, that's the thing we're looking for here. So it doesn't matter that I didn't get to something else's. I can just focus on string. And over here, it's saying, look at the, the big red bar, that most of them are leaking from this plate. So I'll expand that. For, most of them are leaking from here. Most of them are leaking from here. Most of them are leaking from here, which is in the something.reset uh, uh, method. So I've, and then, that's calling do something, and that's also calling something in it, so the creators. So I found a, a nasty suspect here, which is something.reset, where most of my stuff are leaking from. And it's not a JVM class, it's one of my classes, so that makes it much more suspicious, because it's typically not a JVM class that's leaking, is it? Uh, it's almost always my class. Um, yeah, well, I can't help it. I don't write that great code, so... Um, okay, so what I've got over here, I've got some things. I can see these are the things that are leaking. But if you go back to here, there aren't any some things that are leaking, there are, but there are something else's that are leaking. Um, so I've got something else down here. Uh, and I've done the cardinal sin of making my hash code mutable. It's dependent on something that can change, and the reset changes it. And so consequently, um, when it tries to find it in the hash map to remove it, it can't find it because it's got a different hash code. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, this is this is actually the single most common leak in all applications. The vast majority of applications have this leak. For the most part, you don't notice it because there aren't that many objects that are leaking. Uh, but it's very very common. It doesn't matter if you if you have a leak that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, but in this case, it, it was it was fairly straightforward. So. Whistle stop. This is, uh, that's I could go through this. We've got three minutes. Um, no. Okay. So that's it. Those are the tools. Let me just go through the, the but there. That's, that's it. Uh, we've just got time for a question if anybody has one. You shouldn't because it was such a brilliant presentation and clear as crystal. 